Welcome to Tech Buzzers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a MySQL database in Azure. Once uh, the database is created, uh, we will use uh, our tool uh, called Azure Data Studio to connect uh, from our local computer. You can use Workbench or any other tool uh, to connect to the uh, MySQL database in Azure as well. So let's go ahead and create our MySQL database. Uh, here I see my resources, so you can see right here. And uh, what you need to do, you will be going to research here and then typing MySQL. So once you type that, it's going to show you a couple of things here in services. It will show you Azure Database for MySQL servers and Azure Database for MySQL flexible servers so this is kind of stand alone and this is where you have more uh, capability or you can add more features to it so right here there's a definition i was just using uh, copilot and i was taking a look what exactly is the difference so if you will use the first one uh, this is what it is so it is in uh, designed for minimal customization and is optimized for a built-in high availability. So high availability is going to be 99.99 as in single availability zone and it supports uh, 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 two versions uh, right here 5.6 is going to retire but uh, you have 5.7 and uh, 8.0. Anyways uh, and with the flexible you have uh, uh, more uh, options such as the high availability uh, you have cost optimization and you can do some reservations as well. Uh, these are just, uh, you know, features you can explore when we will create. Uh, we are going to take a look in that detail. So let's click on Azure database for my SQL servers here. And then uh, we will uh, explore all those features from there. You can click right here or you can go from here at this button as well. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, say create. And once you hit create button, it's going to bring the next window so it is giving you two options here it's telling you hey you want to have flexible server or you want to have wordpress my sql flexible server so see at the end when you create here it gives you those uh, flexible uh, server options as well like multi uh, az and all that so you can select if you need now we are going to select our subscription here so i have a tech browser subscription that's my subscription name and then resource group so let's just select the resource group of tech browsers if you have other resource group and you want to manage accordingly you can select the one in which you want to place your mysql database now we go to the server name in this case i'm going to go with the tech brothers mysql looks like the name is available no problem at all and then uh, it's going to ask you in which region you would like to place that uh, i'm going to go with the same east us uh, or east us is too is fine as well uh, we, i am in america so that's uh, absolutely work for me and most of my clients are let's say in america who are going to connect to the server so i will keep my instance uh, in the same region uh, you can choose what works best for you or where exactly your services are used uh, now you have different options here and if you see here you have 5.7 retired and you have 8.0 so that's the latest version you will be using now so some of the time it may be copilot or other ai tools will not give you the exactly same information so see right here it was telling you hey mysql 5.6 is retired but available is 5.7 and 8 but here you only see 5.7 also retired and the 8.0 is available anyway so we go with 8.0 now it asks you what is the purpose you want to use this mysql for small or medium sized databases you can select that one so once you do that it as it kind of select the configuration automatically and show you how much you will be paying per month so let's take a look here it is telling you two week cores okay the storage uh, is a 64 gb and the auto scale iops uh, and backup retention seven days normally that's what they give you and band, band bandwidth so you can take a look on that if i will go critical business and uh, select that you see how the price has changed also the type of compute has changed so it depends what is your need and how much usage or uh, how much load you will have so you will uh, plan accordingly now if i will simply go with the let's say uh, tier one business and uh, even a two week core is not enough for me i can go to the configuration server here and then uh, once uh, the window will open it will let us uh, choose or make changes uh, so you see right there, I have all different options. I can go with 4V, 
cores 32 GB I can go with the 8 and all that and IOPS as well so as soon as you increase the V cores and memory you have more IOPS so I will let's say select 4 but you see the price is changing as well so in your case or my case uh, I will advise my, to myself as well start with a small always and test it out and then go for a, a higher uh, size in case I need to do that we can change it later as well now here if you want 500 uh, GB or uh, you will delete 500 okay so you see that the price changes so now you have auto scale IOPS so you can pre provision as well so this is the max it is already done so if you want to decrease or increase it's going to also increase or decrease the price accordingly so with the high availability you have same zone and redundant high availability provided to additional server and uh, you can enable it so once you enable it see the price has doubled because now it is creating or keeping an other instance ready for you in case of failover so just choose what you need and the same again you have seven days backups so you can do 30 day backups and all that so you can increase if you want and then you have other geo redundant for outages and disaster as well if you want to do that so in our case uh, we are going to go back and uh, for my demo i'm not interested uh, in this uh, all configuration so i'm not same in this i'm going to cancel this out from top and uh, we are going to go with the just the development version of it um, so i selected my tech brothers uh, uh, resource group and uh, the name was tech brothers my sql and here is the uh, same thing and i'm going to go for development or hobby projects uh, and uh, for that one you are uh, just having one v core you are uh, just uh, paying uh, 20 gb for 20 gb and uh, the total price comes to uh, 14 dollar 71 cents uh, per month uh, that's what i want uh, because i don't care about uh, high availability and all those kind of things it's just my development uh, but see if you do enable high availability you have the option here the price is double uh, so i'm gonna just cancel it out i don't want it okay now there are different methods of uh, how you will be connecting to this uh, mysql database uh, instance uh, you can use mysql authentication only you can use microsoft entra authentication only or you can use a uh, mysql and uh, microsoft uh, uh, entra uh, authentication as well i'm going to go with the simple mysql authentication in that case uh, you will be providing username and password so let's do that okay so password matches with each other that's good now we are going to go to the we can create here but i want to go to networking because i want to have this instance accessible from my uh, ip so i want to add that ip here so here you will add the rule if you uh, also want like such as uh, microsoft uh, azure data factory want to access this uh, instance uh, what you are going to do you're going to click here so microsoft uh, azure data factory and some other services will be able to use this instance now uh, without adding the, those ips here so just simply go ahead and uh, give the permission now in my case i'm say my ip and then uh, maybe amir or something and here you will provide uh, the ip you will go to the website uh, where you will say what is my ip on the google it will show you your ip and then you can add that i'm going to go ahead and copy my ip and add that as well i'm not going to show you my ip though <laughs> okay so i'm gonna just paste the same ip in the starting and ending if you want to have range uh you you have multiple customers coming from the uh ips you know you know that you can put the range as well so but in my case uh, i'm using single ip for my from my laptop so i'm fine you have a private endpoints uh, that you can create and in that case uh, you also have a uh, use the virtual network and uh, give the access to the server so we are not going to go in that complex scenario right now we are not using uh, uh, vnet and virtual uh, networks or all that in this uh, case uh, we are simply creating uh, with public access now we will go ahead and create uh, you have other options as well in security so you can take a look if uh, what works best for you or uh, what is needed in your environment or in your company now you will go ahead and create and uh, it's going to take some time 
so let's hit uh, review all those changes in my case uh, mostly I will review the price because uh, I am doing demos but in your case you're gonna take a look on the compute storage uh, IOPS settings backup and all those are gonna details here and uh, once you are done then you will be hitting the create button now awesome our uh, deployment is completed and we can see it went through some steps uh, and uh, finally the instances are ready now what we can go we can uh, click on this uh, go to resource and it's going to show us uh, mysql instance okay here we can see our mysql instance and uh, that's our server name that's uh, admin uh, login name is amir and uh, then it shows you other things such as mysql version and uh, some uh, in which availability zone it was created uh, so it was automatically created in uh, availability zone 3 we could have select 1 2 3 if we wanted but uh, um, you know we didn't select uh, so it created in uh, 3 it doesn't really matter in our case uh, now it, uh, the status is available few things uh, to see you can uh, uh, reset the password here you can uh, restore you can restart you can stop uh, and all those uh, or you can delete as well uh, if you want to see the process list uh, you can uh, do it here you can connect to the my sql instance from here as well it's going to open powershell and uh, then uh, you will uh, connect from there but in our case we want to connect uh, to this mysql instance uh, from our local computer now what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this uh, uh, server name once i copy i'm going to go ahead and open azure data studio in the azure data studio you see i have uh, extensions here in the extensions uh, i installed the uh, mysql extension and postgres uh, extension because i work with both uh, of these uh, databases uh, but uh, if you have sql server and all that azure data studio does not need any extension it uh, automatically comes with that so no problem at all now you go to the connections here and then uh, you're going to go to the uh, new connection and it's going to ask you a few questions let's fill those those questions in connection type it um, always have a, a microsoft sql server then uh, we install the extension so we see the mysql and uh, also the postgres we are going to select mysql here then we will provide the server name and uh, now authentication type uh, you have a different things that you data uh, directory or a password we are going to go with the password we know our username so let's provide the username here and uh, then uh, provide the password you can select uh, the database from here if you want to specifically work with uh, some database maybe mysql or a new database and all that we can uh, simply select mysql if i don't do that it's going to automatically connect to that anyways so now we are connected and here you will see the details about your server you have different databases here and uh, as of now we don't have uh, any user database that's why it's not showing us uh, in the list uh, right here uh, but we can go to the new query if I click on server here uh, and uh, this is our home now we can go to the let me right click right here so you can see actually these databases here as well once you can click here and then go to the home and uh, select the server now I can go ahead and create a new query and uh, I'm gonna go for it create uh, database test so I will do that and then run this uh, query and it's gonna create this uh, database so you see right there databases and we can see the test here I can disconnect from here and change so if I need to change it let's say I was connected with the uh, MySQL now I want to connect with the test so I'm going to select the test here and then click connect again now I'm connected with the test database so if I will go ahead and create uh, maybe some queries let's see so I will say create table my table and uh, ID integer name watcher that should work just fine and now I will simply insert a row in this okay great and then finally we write our select statement let's execute and here is our row 
Now, if you go to the database uh, and just refresh here, you will see the list of the tables, views, store procedure, functions, and events. So, so that's great. Now you can go back uh, to your uh, Azure portal and here, uh, I will suggest you take a look on these uh, different uh, tabs. Uh, so you have properties here, it tells you uh, what type of uh, pricing tier you have, compute, uh, storage, and everything. And then uh, it has recommendations in case, uh, you know, uh, you are not following the Azure best practices. Uh, you will uh, use this tool uh, tab uh, most of the time because the slow query runnings or how much CPU is used and I, I O counts and all that uh, and the DB connections as well. Uh, so you can see right here uh, the CPU and memory that's very important to see if uh, you feel like your instance is small it's always 100% use maybe you need to increase your CPU or memory depends upon what is uh, under the pressure. So this is how you will create a MySQL instance in Azure and then connect to the tools such as Workbench or Azure uh, Data Studio as I shown you in this video. I hope you liked my videos and thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.